All right, so at this point so far, uh, I am getting a result. Uh, one of the networks appears in the console randomly from the number of networks that I have. So if I want to start to display this on screen, we need to take advantage of that div that's on screen. Um, we're going to continue to use this string because I want to display basically all of that data that I'm talking about. So I'm going to comment out that uh, console output that is only displaying the one name. On the next line, on the next line, I'm going to say str plus equals. We're going to add more to the string. If we simply have equals, basically it's take the thing on the right and put it into the thing on the left if it's just equals. More technically, remove the thing on the left and put the thing on the right into it. I want to add to it, so plus equals. Whatever's going to be on the right, add to what's already there. So right now it's empty. We're going to add something plus equals. So we're going to add more to what that string is. We're going to build it up uh, piece by piece. So this is going to be HTML. We'll say um, div. Actually, we don't need that div, right? Because we've already got a div. Never mind. We're going to need image. IMG tag. This is made out of source. Single quotes. We can't use the double quotes because we've got double quotes around the whole string. If we were to do double quotes, I believe I mentioned this before, that will break the string because then it's going to see it as the string starts here and then it ends here and then there's nothing here and then it continues. So no, we want single quotes because then it'll see it opening quote, ending quote, opening quote, ending quote. We'll leave source alone for the moment, space, uh, we also have the um, we have the we're going to use a title. That's where the description is going to go. An image tag has an attribute of source. It has an optional attribute of title. Title is what allows us that if we put our mouse over an image, we get a little pop-up that's built into HTML. So we're going to display a title there eventually, and then we're going to. After the, uh, after the image, we're going to add a break, because on the next line, we're going to display, for the moment, uh, ABC. And that's going to have an A tag around it. So in that div that we've got on screen, we're going to display eventually a string that is made out of an image, break, and some text. The image is going to have something, attribute, something title. A tag should also have the um, attribute of href. <coughs> Single quotes again, because all of this is inside of the double quotes. Well, I wrote it like this because to give you the sense of this is the stuff that is static and we need to load also dynamic stuff, dynamic data, which is this here, db.socialnetworks, random social network dot something. So if I wanted to display that social network, it's, it's this example that I have here. This, this long reference here, that represents what's going to go inside of the, the A tag. 
the name of the particularly chosen social network randomly is what's going to display there. instead of the placeholder ABC. So I can't uh, zoom in very well on that. So we'll fill this in in a moment, but do you see here the idea? Uh, we're going to display an image of rape and then the particular random network. Well, because it's in quotes, it's a string and it's static, it's not dynamic, it's not going to process as JavaScript. If you were to run this to confirm that, you would see that, that it would very dutifully simply... Oh, and we need one more thing. It would dutifully only display what is written in quotes to really then display that on screen. Next line. This is where we've got the LDiv show network dot inner HTML equal to str. Uh, variation of what we did up, uh, up here. In the div, write some HTML, <coughs> the description of the zero at the first social network. We're doing it over here, but now everything that is inside of string variable, which is all of this, all of that, show it in the in the div. So string is our sort of uh, shorthand for that whole block of text. And what I was getting at was then yes, then it will dutifully simply write what you told it, which is that it didn't actually write that social network. We have to do what we've done before where we have to judiciously end the string and continue it and all of that so that this can be dynamic and the rest can be static. So when we did this last time, and if it was a little confusing, watch me first. I'm going to end the quote right there, plus then I'm going to plus and continue the quote. So we've got this part as a string plus back to JavaScript, give me the name, plus continue the HTML. Now when I click, different network every time. So let me back up there. You need to break the string in the right place. It starts here, before the dynamic part, end double quote, because that's going to be that, opening and closing. So double quote, space plus, because we're adding more. Uh, the static stuff plus the dynamic stuff, and then we need to go back to the static. This is all broken now, because we've got that floating quote there. So after the dynamic name of the network plus quote, so that we close the quote for the HTML tag. So we've got all of that dynamic back to HTML stack. We need to do something like that for the other parts. This is going to look pretty messy. But if we now that we've broken it with the plus, we can actually press enter to kind of put it into single lines to make it a little readable. So for example, we can uh, we can do it anywhere we want, but let's say plus right there. Right before the plus, I moved that to its own line. So it's the it's the string, because white space doesn't matter, to the browser. It then sees plus continuation. So that should work exactly the same as I had that long line, because we need to do the same thing here. Source <coughs> db.socialnetworks random social network dot uh, ing. That's the field that is storing the picture for the source. And then for title, we'll need 
db.socialnetworks, random social network dot uh, desk, dsc. And then we'll need for href db.socialnetworks, random social network dot url. So all of that data be, to be put in the right place. So I know I'm going to need to do quote, end quote, plus continuing quote. db, copy it, that'll be way, way easier. Dot uh, image plus. So this is going to look weird. Quote, source, opening, single quote, closing single quote right there. The end of the double quote, so this is one part, plus the dynamic part, plus continuing. So then that single quote comes back to that. And I'll do the same thing on the title and href. Quote ends there, plus quote. Move it to the next line. Same thing, remember that's still in memory. Dot desk plus and href again. And the double quote plus and the plus continue the double quote. So that was one long line, and if I break it up here, I have the ability to break it up because of uh, the concatenation. We have string and continue to add to it. That's when I can press enter. It would not work if I tried to press enter right there. This this uh, string right here, if I try to press enter between it, that will cause problems. I can only break it. Do you have the angle bracket for the image back? Closing. It should be right here. No, that's the href, isn't it? Uh, where is that image tag? Um, title right there. Yeah. Here it is right there. Open image, source, title, and the number. So that's why I wrote it all as one um, string. So that I know I'm going to need a, a source, a title, an href. Then I have to figure out where I can open and close the quotes. And then if you have all of that, now you can save it and run it. And not only will it display the name, but now it should display the picture. When you hover your mouse over it, you'll see the description. When you click on the name, it will go to that URL.
So out of these three networks, I get it semi-random. But now that I've got the algorithm, all of this code here, if it works, I have the the end result. So I can go back to the social.json file and uh, add one or the rest of those social networks. Let's say I go over to the JSON file. The next network is Google Plus. So Twitter was the last network I had there in the JSON file. If I copy that bundle of data, I can add with a comma one more paste. I need name. Google Plus. I can say for the description the Google network. This is picture four. And the address would be google.com. Slash plus PMD Interactive. And I could add another one. The next one that's coming is Pinterest. Yes? Yes. There's definitely different ways to do it. If we, well, I think if because here we need to do two things: we need to display an image and the accompanying text. So if we had already put the image, we've got the div and the image. I would have to think about how would we have to rewrite it, because we would need to populate the source of the image as well as then having the text below it. So right here we're sort of like, like one level a little bit higher so that we can hit both the image and, and the text. If we were one level lower that we're down inside of the image already, we have to figure out, well, what do we need to do to then display the, the text outside of the image? So both ways could work. I'd have to think about it for a moment how to do it the way you're saying. But yeah, there's so many ways to do the same thing that I guess one way to figure out what's the best way is if I fully know how, how it all works, I could figure out what's the most efficient, which way you know saves more memory, which is quicker, which is more elegant. Um, you know, figuring out uh, the best way to do it, it's part of not only the right code, but part of aesthetics as well. And yeah, I think so, because this particular amount of data, that's what it lends itself to. When we get back to the CPDB, and we're going to display uh, more data that we save. Remember, we're going to save the name of a comic, the publisher, the year of it. We have all of this data to save, so we have to figure out how do we display all of that information in, in a good way. So we'll probably have a variation of this. So these I then also uh, added the space just to line that up. And I was adding another network. Uh, I'm, up, I'm up to Pinterest, the fifth one. So once I fill in those details back on the JSON file, Pinterest, that's a good thing here, graphics focused network. Here, Pinterest.com slash PMD Interactive. So I have the algorithm in the HTML file figured out. 
I then um, add more data to that JSON file. And if my code is working in the in the HTML in the JavaScript, it'll continue to work. We have dot length. It's cut off right here, but it's dot length. That's developing the, the random number. At the beginning was three. Now it's up to five. So more networks could appear. Now with, with two more that I've added, there's Twitter again, there's Google+, Plus, one of the new ones I added. Oh, and, and like I said, if you hover your mouse over the picture, you should get the little pop-up, which was the title, the title attribute. There's YouTube again, there's Pinterest, so what I just wrote there appears. So this is the example where the um, we created this schema. We created the way this database works, name, description, image, URL. The raw data is here, but when it the big the magic is really happening under parse, if if we never did json.parse, our project wouldn't understand any of this over here. Which of the social networks is properties? That syntax there is JavaScript objects, dealing with objects, database object, this particular network and its description property. This right here is just raw text. It has no inherent meaning until the code or something processes it, and that's parse, json.parse. That basically turns it into an object, as we've been used to using so far with, with JavaScript. That information that we that we saw at the Marvel at the Marvel site. Again, if we have it all set up and we create an account with our credentials and all of that, it would kick back data that looks something like that, but with a lot of fields, with the name of the character, the year, the barcode, like all of this information, and then probably uh, sub-data in sub-data, like we had the example of address earlier when I had it here. Address, and it's got all of this sub-data. The reason that this worked at the very beginning when I said, okay, we can do DB user, the second u the third user, address zip code, because it's an object. I had ha I had it up here, but I didn't do that parse thing because we weren't there yet. But now that we've done it, it's this. That raw data that we got from the file that we connected to, social JSON, uh, we parsed it into an object so we can deal with it as that shorthand. and then all of these other sub-properties. We would be able to do somewhat of the opposite to store data back into it. Um, if we wanted to add a new social network, 
we'd have a way to do that as well. We won't quite get to it yet. We will, of course, when we work on the real project, but I wanted to show this introduction to JSON to think about bundling this data together in this NoSQL style, which is very common nowadays. PouchDB, MongoDB, a bunch of these like web client-side databases that don't need a server. They run off of the client's web browser, or in our case, eventually, device. But the cool thing about PouchDB, if you research it over the weekend, is that then it could replicate itself to a server. You can save this data to a real server online and retrieve it and store it and edit it and change it back and forth and keep it synchronized. And those are things we'll cover later. When you're trying to run this, and as we test this, if you tried it in Chrome and it just doesn't want to work, it's because, like I said, Chrome has a higher bar of security here. As soon as I try to click the button, but when I click the button, that executes all of this stuff about... Click the button, and then this, this executes the opening the connection and all of that. So this error that's happening here in, in Chrome, it's saying line 26, in my case, line 26 is right here. I, we can't send, we can't actually start the connection to the file because it says cross-origin requests are only supported for protocol schemes of HTTP, data, Chrome, Chrome extension, and HTTPS. It says Chrome is only going to be happy and it's only going to let us if we're, if we're connecting through, for example, secure HTTPS. We're not, we're not really doing that. We're connecting technically uh, through uh, file protocol. Not connecting through server protocol, so Chrome is saying that that's weird. That's bad. You're getting hacked, and so it doesn't let anything happen. If this was all on a server, where inherently the protocol would be HTTP, it would would, it would allow it. So that's how we had to test in Chrome, in Firefox. Is Chrome's too secure? In our case, there's probably a setting we can change to allow us. But we've got Firefox. Firefox was letting us, although then it was showing this about malformed, not well formed, that one, uh, that's Firefox itself saying that it is similar to what the server stuff is happening, but also that the syntax, it expects it in a certain way, but it's not on a server, so it's complaining. That's why we just say, okay, thank you, but we just turn it off. Yeah. This could, uh, this could work uh, on a phone, but uh, you know, it, it would be best to have it on a server to simply transfer it like onto the SD memory card. I don't think it can fully work, possibly, I guess. But again, this would be assuming it's working on a server at this point. When we get it into the real device for part two of the class, then this will not be a problem. But right now, because we're kind of halfway as a website, it's giving us this problem. If you were able to get the network, very good. Um, this is our first touch of that. So your unofficial homework over the break, json.org. I'm going to go look at that site to kind of read a little bit more. Maybe check out one of these sublinks over there. And pouchdb.com. I'll have some lab time in case you haven't... Uh, gotten graded on the project. If the code didn't quite work, we'll figure that out. And I'll put the example code there. But this concept of JSON, it's a, it's a big one to know nowadays. And we'll see how it works for us here when we get to PouchDB. General questions that we've talked about or, or we'll get to? Okay, so that's uh, we'll have some lab time. I'll put the code in the network folder and we'll do and we'll wrap up for the moment.